you're watching Let the Quran Speak. With the colder, snowier weather and the shorter winter days, we tend to want to hibernate. And uh, Brother Shabir, the question is, how do we remain productive and not kind of cuddle up in, in, in our blankets and in our comforters on bed, in bed? Well, it, it is important for us to recognize that uh, this challenge is there and the possibility of, uh, of feeling uh, the need for staying indoors mm -hmm. and um, you know, hibernating is yes. the word that you use. Uh, that, that, that is there and that, that's a challenge to overcome that. I think that's, that's the, the recognition of that is uh, the, the first step. Mm -hmm. uh, more more uh, broadly speaking, uh, we should recognize that time is a gift from God and, and we should never waste it. Uh, we often hear it said that time is money. But one of the Muslim scholars uh, in, in our ancient, ancient history uh, said that time is more than, than wealth, uh, more valuable than wealth. Because if, if wealth is spent, uh, expended, then you can always uh, earn it back mm -hmm. and regain it. But time, once lost, can never be regained. Yes. Uh, so we should uh, be very conscious about the way in which we spend our time. Uh, the Quran speaks about the changing of day and night, uh, the alternation between all of these different things, and uh, the regulation of the sun and the moon. Uh, the Quran speaks about uh, the uh, winter and, and the summer, and mm -hmm. the journeys that the Quraysh used to make with their trading caravans, taking advantage of the best of each season. Uh, we, we should, we should uh, take a lesson from that and recognize that each season comes with its own benefits uh, and we should capitalize on those benefits. Mm -hmm. Some people dread the winter, you know, they, they hate it, they, they, they don't look forward to it, you know, they try to stay as indoors as much as possible because they're afraid of the cold or the dark. But I think what you're trying to say is that we should embrace whatever weather God gives us yes, and make each, the best of it. Exactly. Each, each, everything that God has given us is there for a reason. The Quran speaks, for example, about the alternation between light, night and day. God has given you the day so that you can go about, you can work, you can earn your living, seek the bounties of God. And he's given you the night so that you can rest. Mm -hmm. and, and imagine if there was no night. I mean, we're, we're complaining now of commercialism with the stores opening till mid midnight and some stores opening 24 hours uh, so it not only does it uh, occupy people who, who have to work there uh, and and prevent people from from resting well uh, those who have to work the night shifts for example but it also uh, creates a culture in which there is no rest there is no like turning off the lights at night and going to sleep and wake up in the morning and having a productive day it's like a continuous uh, 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 turmoil. Uh, and uh, the seasons are also like that. One mm -hmm. of the uh, Muslim scholars, uh, Hassan al-Basri, is noted to have said that we should welcome the, the winter uh, for its long nights and short days because on, on the long nights you can make more uh, uh, prayers at night, which is valued in the Islamic tradition. And uh, on the uh, uh, short days of winter, you can fast more often and mm -hmm. gain the blessings of fasting so many days. Mm -hmm. um, winter, winter comes with its own uh, benefits. I mentioned the Quraysh people. The Quran says, uh, As for the trading caravans if, uh, of the uh, Quraysh, uh, their, their, their trading journeys in the winter and the summer. Now, it is noted that in, in Islamic history that uh, the Quraysh people uh, used to uh, take their, their journeys in, in the winter towards the south for mm -hmm. trading, and then in the summer they would go up north. Okay. So they, they, they took advantage. They know where things were cooler and where things were hotter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, they planned their journeys accordingly. So they, they benefited from both, uh, depending on the season. And they, they did different things within different months, but they still were productive. Exactly. So how do we maintain? How do we, you know, or do you have any tips for maintaining productivity? Uh, during the winter months? Well, one of the things we can uh, do is to uh, set, set a kind of a schedule and, and goal for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to accomplish this in, during the winter, and that requires uh, working so many hours and spending so many hours with family and so many hours on my personal project, my hobby, 
uh, or my, my devotion or, or to Islam or my learning of uh, things that are required of Muslims or that are beneficial for Muslims to learn, uh, memorizing certain parts of the Quran, for example, um, uh, reading the Quran from cover to cover, mm -hmm. things like that. So we can take advantage of this. We can say, okay, in the summer, there was so much outing, there were, the theme parks were open and I had to go out with the kids there and so on. Now I am, you know, when winter, we're going to be more indoors. We're going to relax near the fireplace. I'm going to curl up with a book. Okay, I want to read uh, a book a month. Mm -hmm. So over the next uh, four months of, let's say, uh, the uh, three months of winter and, you know, the other cold uh, days together, uh, I'll read four books. So that will be a goal. And uh, once we have some concrete goals like this, uh, and we have a schedule in which we will devote time to uh, accomplish these goals, uh, then we can accomplish uh, a lot during the, this time. Mm -hmm. That's good. This seems like good advice. Now, what about uh, maintaining one, a healthy lifestyle? Because during the, during the summer, you know, people are out, they're biking, they're walking, they're rollerblading, they're doing many outdoor activities. Uh, in the winter, there aren't as many opportunities to do that. Uh, so how would you suggest that somebody um, maintain a good and healthy lifestyle? Well, I should first add that uh, it, it is a, a part of Islamic teaching to protect our bodies and protect our health. So, so developing uh, attitudes and, and, uh, acti and, and engaging in activities uh, that will uh, take care of our health is, is all uh, rewarding uh, in, in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we should pay particular attention to this. Uh, having a, an exercise routine, uh, whether one takes a trip to the gym or one has uh, you know, an in-house uh, mini gym or one does some exercise without requiring any equipment, uh, all of this will uh, go to one's credit uh, with God and, and that's part of being a, a good Muslim. Uh, in uh, shoveling the snow obviously gives us some exercise though one has to be careful not to overexert because that could lead to heart problems mm -hmm. um, and back problems and back <laughs> problems yes so, so this is very important taking care of safety I mean by changing into snow tires uh, for the winter may involve a little bit of work and inconvenience sometimes even a little bit of cost but uh, the extra traction that that gives you and the safety it involves for yourself for your family uh, all of this is uh, uh, is Islamic activity. Uh, you get reward from God for doing this because you are really taking care of the amana or the trust which God has bestowed on us, the bodies we have, the lives we have, uh, the health that we have, taking care of all of that, bundling up before going out in the, in, in, in the outdoors to protect against the harshness of the cold. Uh, that too is uh, rewardable mm. uh, because we are protecting ourselves, we are maintaining the health that God has gifted us with. All right, thank you for that, Brother Shabir. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. <laughs> 